So, good afternoon and a Merry Christmas to everyone who's joining me for this live stream, this Chris Tingle live stream, this first ever online Chris Tingle that we have done at Salem Baptist Church. But before we get going on to what I, uh, before we get to all of that, the Chris Tingle, I'm going to light a candle as a sign and a symbol of God's presence with us today. Now, there is nothing special about this candle. There's nothing magical, nothing holy, but Christians throughout the years have found candles to be really helpful, a really helpful way to help us think about God's presence with us. So I'm going to light this candle and say these words here in this place. Now, at this time, God is present with us. And so I say to you, Wherever you are, whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching it recorded, God is present with you. Now, you may have noticed that the days have been getting shorter and shorter, which means the nights have been getting longer and longer. Now, I think we've already had the shortest day of the year, but experts tell me that Christmas Day is actually the first day that you can tell without complicated scientific uh, equipment. It's the first day you can tell with the naked eye that the days are getting longer. And of course, Christmas is when Christians celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And to help us think about that, to explain something of the importance of the Christmas story, today we are going to make a Christingle. Now, to make a Chris Tingle, and I hope you're going to make one along with me, you will need an orange or something similar. I believe Joe is going to use a grapefruit. I want to see pictures of that, uh, Joe. Joe's using a grapefruit, but ideally an orange. You need some red ribbon or some red tape, some sweeties. I've got some little midget gems, I think they are. Some sweets uh, or dried fruit would do. Uh, some foil, ideally. Uh, and a candle. Now, hopefully, if you're watching, you may well have already been given a pack or you may have collected all these things already. If not, maybe uh, watch the whole video and then you can collect the things and make the Chris Tingle later. Or if you want to, you can pause the video, collect the things and come back and watch it a bit later on. So you ready? I hope everybody's ready uh, to make our Chris Tingles. But before we do that, let's pray. Will you pray with me? Jesus, light of the world, we ask that you would shine in this place. Jesus, light of the world, we ask that you would shine in our hearts. Jesus, light of the world, we ask that you would shine in our lives. Jesus, light of the world, we ask that you would shine in all the earth. Amen. Amen. So the Christingle tells a wonderful story. It's actually the greatest story ever told. It starts with God making the world and everything in it out of nothing at all. Actually, that's not quite true. God actually made it all out of love. You see, God loved the world into being. And so uh, I invite you to, to take your orange. Joe, you can take your grapefruit. I invite you to take it and just simply hold it in your hands. You see, this piece of fruit, this round object, is a sign and it is a symbol of the whole world. So I invite you to just hold it in your hands and imagine for a moment that you are God, holding the world in your hands and loving it so much. God made the world out of love. And the Bible tells us that into that world, God did not just make the world, but he poured into the world every good gift. The changing seasons, 
The plants, the trees, the animal world, and people, us, human beings. Human beings just like you and just like me. All different. Difference of beauty, difference of imagination, different potential. And God put every good gift into his world. And to help us show that on our, our Chris Dingle at a minute is just an orange, we're going to change this and we're going to take four cocktail sticks like that. Can you see? A simple cocktail stick. Now be careful because the ends are sharp. And you need to take a cocktail stick and one of your sweets and push the sweets onto the cocktail stick right down right through so that you've got sweets on your cocktail stick and you need to do this onto four cocktail sticks and what you need to do is make sure that the last sweet you don't push all the way through the last sweet covers the pointy end can you see so I'm going to do that. I'd like you to do that with me. So you get four cocktail sticks with sweets on each one. Now you can leave these as decoration or you can eat them when we've finished. Is that okay? And if you've got some spare ones in a packet, Feel free to eat one as you go. Welcome Aaron and Sarah. You need to get your orange and four cocktail sticks with sweets. When you push the sweets on, making sure that the last one doesn't go all the way through to cover the pointy end. I put too many on my first one. I've got two sweets on each stick. You can put as many on as you can, but you need to make sure that you've left a little pointy end to push it into the orange, because the next thing we're going to do is push the sticks into the orange. I've got four. As you make yours as you put your sweets onto the sticks. I invite you to think about all the good gifts that God has given us. As we make our Chris Thingle this afternoon on Christmas Eve, what blessings would you like to thank God for today? What are the good things that you're thankful for in your life? Think of them now and then think of them again when you pull the sweets off and eat them later. So we take our orange and into the four compass points we put our sweeties as a sign and a symbol of every good gift that God has given to us. But the Bible tells us that although God made the world out of love and although he blessed the world richly, it was not the bright and light place that God intended it to be because human beings didn't have God as their king but instead turned their back on him. And the thing about the world is that human beings have never really taken proper care of the world. Never really taken proper care of each other. So the world has become a dark place. I invite you to just take a moment to think about the things that are wrong with God's world. What are the things that make it a dark place? What stops it being the place that God wants it to be. I can think about war, famine, 
not even famine, but just the fact that there are people in our country that are hungry today. The reality that there are bullies in our world and they seem to do well. Pollution and of course disease as we meet online because of coronavirus. The world is dark in many ways today but God made the world out of love and he loved it despite the fact that human beings turn their back on him. And so God sent his son into the world to be the light of the world. Not to be a light shining from heaven, but to be a light from the earth itself. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. Jesus being born in Bethlehem. God's son becoming a human being like us to bring God's light to a world in darkness. So, what you need to do, and if you're a child, you need to get a grown-up to do this for you, is just cut a cross into the top of your orange. And you need to do that so that we can push a candle in. Now, you might want to take a piece of tin foil, place that over the hole. There's nothing symbolic about the tin foil, by the way. It's just simply to catch any wax drips and then take a candle, hold it firmly at the bottom and push it in to the cross hole that you've just made. It might be helpful to push a pencil in first. Make sure you don't break your candle. And there you have the candle in our orange or grapefruit world. should be firmly fixed. You see, Jesus came and was firmly part of our world. You see, it was a, a very dark world that Jesus came to. When Jesus was born, his own people were oppressed. The, the, they were uh, occupied by the Roman Empire. Jesus was born in a dark and dingy stable. And if you read further into the story in the Bible, you find out that Jesus and his family became refugees when they had to run away from King Herod, who wanted to kill the baby Jesus. There's no doubt about it. When he was born, Jesus was born into a dark world. But that's exactly why God sent his son. That's exactly why Jesus chose to come into the world, to be born into darkness. When would you switch on a light? Or light a candle? Do you do that when it's light in the middle of the day or do you do it when it's dark? I bet it's when it's dark. Try this. Switch off the lights in the room where you are now. I'm going to do that. I've got lots of lights on but I'm going to switch my lights off and see how dark we can get it. You turned your lights off. The only lights I have are the candle lights from my advent wreath. Can you see how much light those candles throw into this room? I invite you to take your Christingle candle and light it in your dark room and see how much light it throws into the darkness. I'm gonna blow out the candle for now. Switch on back on my lights so that you can see me properly. The 
thing about Jesus being the light of the world is that the world didn't like the light. Jesus shone in the darkness and when he did he showed up all the wrong things that had been hidden in the dark. He showed up the injustice in the world and he lived a life that showed how we should treat people who are poor or ill or, or people that we find difficult and people didn't always like that. Jesus talked about how the leaders hadn't been caring properly for everyone and how people had forgotten what really matters but God still loved the world. And so on our Chris Thingle, we add a piece of red ribbon around the world. Now to do that, you might need to get a pen. This is a bit fiddly. It's helpful to have two pens. So our Christinga looks a bit like that. The red ribbon around your orange, around the Christinga, shows how God's love has always gone all around the world. How do we see God's love for the world and for us? How do we know that people love us? How do we know we love other people? I invite you to hold your Chris Dingle now and think about all the ways that God's love breaks into the world today. I think that God's love for the world was shown most when Jesus, grown up Jesus, died on the cross. So the ribbon is red for Jesus' blood shed on the cross. I invite you to light your candle now. Be careful for the wax will drip. You see, although Jesus died, the candle flame continues to burn brightly because Jesus came alive again, showing that the love of God was deeper than all, the hatred of the world. He was deeper than all of that sin, all that had gone wrong in the world. God's love was stronger than the violence of the world and the light of God was brighter than all the darkness. And this is the story the Christingle tells, the story of the light and love of God. Jesus coming to bring the light and love of God to every dark corner of the world. Where do you think that light is most needed right now? Where in the world and in what situations would you most like the light and love of God to be now? In those places where there are war, in the places where people are suffering and dying, in, in every place where there is still injustice and oppression and carelessness of one another, in the lives of vulnerable children and young people who feel alone, afraid with no one to turn to. We think about all the places where people are suffering from COVID-19 right now. All the places where people are scared of this disease. All the families that are sad because they cannot see each other this Christmas time. Hold your Chris Dingle. Feel the, the weight of the world in your hands. I wonder if you can feel the warmth of the candle flame. Can you see the light shining off the surface of the orange? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But he also said to Christians, you are the light of the world. How does that light get from Jesus to us and into the world? Well, we can't do it this year, but Christingles are best lit from one another. And when our own flame is being lit with the light of God's love, our next job is to pass it on. And that's how the light and love of God will spread through the world. So I ask you, how will you share the light and love of God today? When this stream finishes, when you've finished watching, 
not just today, but tomorrow and over the next few weeks? What acts of kindness or of love, what words of peace, what prayers, what thoughts can you share with the world? You see, today and this Christmas, we remember how much God loves the world and each one of us. And we thank him for all his blessings, just as he has so richly blessed us. And we take those blessings and become a blessing to those around us and to the world. Amen. Shall we pray? When I say, may we share, I invite you to respond by saying, your light in the darkness. May we share your light in the darkness. Lord Jesus, light of the world, may we share your light in the darkness. Lord God, I hold this Christingle as a sign of your love. May we share your light in the darkness. The candle planted deep within the world as a sign that you made your home among us and lived with the poor and neglected. And so we ask, may we share your light in the darkness. The ribbon wrapped around the earth, a sign of your love shown on the cross, enfolding the whole world with your saving love. And so we pray, may we share your light in the darkness. The fruits and sweet signs of all the good things you have made, given to us that we might share them fairly so everyone can have enough. May we share your light in the darkness. Lord Jesus, light of the world, as I hold this Christingle and think about your great love for me, I ask that you would help me to take this light out into the world and to share your love with others, especially those who need it most. And so we ask, may we share your light in the darkness. Amen. Amen. I'm going to blow out my candle now. Be careful you don't blow wax everywhere. I'm going to place my Christingle just to one side and light it again tomorrow at Christmas, on Christmas Day. Friends, thank you so much for joining me on our first ever online Christingle service. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy the symbolism of the Christingle and you can find somewhere amongst your Christmas decorations to place it. If you don't want to do that, you might just want to eat the sweets, but I hope you enjoyed thinking about the, the message of Christmas, that Jesus, the light of the world, came into our world to save it. If you're not already in contact with Salem, please have a look at uh, salembaptist.org.uk. Please fill in the contact, your contact details on the contact page and we'll make sure that we keep in touch. We're going to meet here again on YouTube, 10.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. If you haven't already, you might like to watch one of one of the two nativities that's on our YouTube channel. And over the next week or so, maybe you want to watch one of our Christmas craft videos and have a go at, at something, maybe a, at the bird feeder. Do explore our YouTube channel and have a look at salembaptist.org.uk slash Christmas. I'm going to blow out this candle now. The one we lit at the start of our stream as a sign of God's presence with us. So I blow it out in the name of God the Father, God the Spirit and God the Son. But blowing the candle out doesn't mean that God's presence is no longer with us. You see, we are the light of the world and we can share God's light, the light of Jesus with all those we meet wherever we go. Amen. So may God bless you. May God bless those you love, whether you are near them or separated from them, whether you see them physically 
or virtually this Christmas time. May God bless you and all those you love. Hope to see some of you tomorrow uh, for our Zoom meeting and for the YouTube service. And I hope to see some of you in the flesh in the new year. God bless you. See you soon.